Hello and welcome. Today we'll be talking about the VanQuest EDCM 2.0 huge bag. This is the platform I chose to go with for this EDC bag. This is being made for my friend for his outdoor kit. He plans to use it in the outdoors obviously and during the winter season when he snowmobiles and also is out and about. So this is sort of like a little thing I did for my friend Billy and he has a couple items that are already in the pack and some of the items in this kit are already kind of on a secondary level or secondary basis and there are a couple other primary tools that would be carrying on him in addition to this pack here so this is not the end all be all for a EDC slash survival kit but this features some items that could help him and I wanted to, him to have something in a core bag kit that he could use in his bag and then take out of the bag and put into another bag so we went with the vanquest edcm 2.0 platform and this is the huge variant on the ecm organizer and it's the biggest one in their lineup and it's one of my favorite packs in addition to the ftim series the 6x9 in particular so vanquest is a good brand and i wanted him to have the best quality items so i got some of these items on either amazon ebay from the dollar 25 store it used to be the dollar store and a couple other places and i had a couple other items lying around so i'll do my best to list everything in the description and go over everything here so here on the table we have the main core pouch here i had some paracord that i bought that's a seven strand and it also has fishing line sewing line inside of it and a wick so you can use it as a fire starter material we have about 12 feet or so on the handle here wrapped up in a paracord fashion here and then on the back we have another hank of about 12 12 and a half feet of that cordage so that's about roughly 24 feet or so 25 feet of cordage on the outside you could use you can access the hank here you can add more to it if he wants to he already is carrying about 50 feet of 550 paracord in his pack so this just adds to that cordage list in his main bag on the back here of the VanQuest EDCM Huge 2.0, we have the Molly Pals webbing arrangement here, and I have part of the extra cordage for the handle going down, so you can use that for something else too. We have the sides here, we have the YKK zippers, these paracord pulls that are on the zippers, and a locking hole here for the zippers. It's double stitched, it's got a nice side here that's also double stitched here as well. And we have the hook and loop field in the front, we have a slip pouch in the front, which have a bunch of stuff inside, which we'll go over. We're going to take over, take out everything in the pouch. And we have this inverted zip that goes around the entire bag here. Opens like a, a gigantic book. And we have the side profile here as well. So before we get into the bag, I'll bring out a, another version of this. And this one's empty. I'm going to be moving over some contents from my other kits into this bag. So we'll go over the bag first before we go over everything inside the bag. Again, we have the front, back, top, bottom, and the side here with the spine. And we can see the regular handle here. It's a very thin but folded over handle, so it's good for gripping. On the back here, we don't have the Xbox stitching on the handles back here, which is kind of a minus, but that's all right. Let's open it up and go over everything inside of it. Obviously, we talked about the, the pocket in the front. And then we also have the inside here. And as you can see, it's filled with this 210 high D nylon viz type of material. It's rip stop nylon, so it's sewn in a way that if it gets ripped, it won't tear the whole thing apart. We have webbing channels here. We have a key fob holder here. We have webbing channels in the spawn area. We have more holders here, these little loop tabs. And we have a pocket beneath here. And we have pockets here on either side split up into a double row of pockets here underneath the main webbing row here. We have a big web here. You have two smaller ones here. We have a two webbing arrangement here and then smaller webbing arrangements on top of these bigger webs. So it's organized in the fashion. It's kind of like a honeycomb fashion where it kind of fits and it's off-centered. So that it's designed to maximize the amount of usable space in the pouch itself. And then finally we have a zipped compartment that runs the whole entire gamut on this side underneath which is also an, an additional area to organize more looser or bigger items that kind of don't fit in the webbing or fit in the pouch or don't you don't want sliding out so it gives you a lot of options to customize 
your pouch with the VanQuest gear pouch here. And I like this particular webbing arrangement compared to some other gear pouch EDC organizers on the market. So that is the EDC M 2.0 huge in a nutshell, the empty one at least. So let's get back to the case and the pouch that I made for my friend. Let's start with the front here. And in the front we have several variety of accessible items. Well, we'll go ahead and pull out the big pen here. This has hand sanitizer in it. So that's one of the most common things people use when they're out in daily activities. And it's good for a variety of different things, obviously. Keeping your hands clean or at least bacteria off your hands. So we have a full pen like that. I do have another bottle here which we could use, but I chose this shape because it holds a little bit more, I think. And it's a little bit easier to put into the bag rather than this shape, but we can also put this on the outside as another unit of hand sanitizer. Now the bonus of this hand sanitizer is that it contains alcohol and it's a multi-use item for disinfecting things and also even in some cases uh, accelerating a fire. So you can use that in a pinch as well. So we have some hand sanitizer in the front pouch here. Uh, next up we have jammed in here amongst softer material we have a compass this is the Sunto A10 compass and I attached the cord to it and this is your basic orientation compass you can change the orientation here where the north is and you can kind of follow that and the main thing about Sunto is that it's resistant to freezing in the winter because most liquid fuel compasses don't have special fluid inside of it that prevent it from expanding when it gets below freezing levels. This can do that and it's good to have something like that on on a person when they're out in the woods and wilderness. So that's why we want the Sunto A10 compass here. A good lightweight choice if not a bit fragile. So I put it in the front pocket when it's nestled with some other softer materials which we have in the front pocket here. Next up we have a pocket full of Poison Ivy Solution Cleaner. Uh, we have DEET also in here. We have Contact Solution Cleaner for the Poison Ivy Tech New also with that. So we have a variety of uh, different types of just medicinal items for anything you might encounter. Even if it's not in the winter, it's a good idea to have something like this in the outdoor pouch. He has a backup slot here for that kind of thing. He might have it in his main medical bag, but... Since we're going over with a core kit, I usually pack a little bit of everything in, a, in what I call my core kits. I have four different kits. I have a core kit, I have a medical bag, I have a tool bag, and then I have a specialty bag. So this would be like under the first category, core kits, which has a little bit of everything in it. So back to this. This is a good thing to have. It contains a lot of anti-tick stuff and also just anti-bug stuff as well. Next up is a small bag of TP. That's all. It's always good to have that in the kit. You can use that for multiple things. And I believe we have one more thing in here, which is our small ouchy boo-boo kit. Just a bunch of small plasters and cleaners in case something happens, a little small gauze. Again, not an actual first aid kit, but just an ouchy boo-boo kit in case some scrape or something happens, you can cover it up. So we have that in the front pouch where it's accessible right away. So those are the items in the front pouch. We'll put them off to the side here. And that is it for the front pouch of the EDCM 2.0. Let's go ahead and get inside, open this up, and you guys can see the mess of stuff that I have in here for him. So I have a bunch of stuff I got off of eBay, lying around, Amazon, etc., etc. And this is what I came up with. Uh, we're going to take everything out and go over everything. Let's start with the front part area. I do have a big pen here. This is sort of like a Frankenstein type of pen. Basically what this is, it's got... I rolled electrical tape on the cap here and this allows him to make any small minor repairs for electronics and it fits nicely in this webbing here. This is our big pen here and I have taped on the inside here is a good amount of sewing thread and then we also have about three feet or so of duct tape. Not a lot but enough to perhaps maybe do some minor repairs or whatnot and on the inside of here you can fit in the tube of this big pen we have needles in there different sizes of needles on the inside so i have that in here just so that we can do some minor sewing and repairs too so you can use that sewing thread 
and it's a smart way of kind of like utilizing the space I feel like in the kit so that we don't take up too much space with our big pen here. So this is kind of like a Frankenstein idea that I came up with to manage uh, space on a pen and just have my duct tape and the repair kit in with the pen. Obviously you can wrap the pen too. So Frankenstein big pen, uh, pretty inexpensive idea, maybe at most a few bucks, maybe two, three dollars, four dollars for all the components on here. And so that is the first item. Second item is going to be our lighting section here. We have a small Olight i3 e EOS. This is a one AAA battery light with one mode on it. The reason why we went with this in the kit is because this runs on a AAA battery and you can put rechargeable batteries in it. I have an alkaline in here, but right now I'm going to replace that with the rechargeable nickel metal hydride battery. So basically, if he runs out of batteries or batteries die, you can always replace these readily available AAA batteries. They're everywhere. And I thought having a smaller backup secondary light or a tertiary light, if you want to look at it that way, with the kit would be a good idea. So these are a good little item. They're small, they're lightweight, and they fit, and they work very well, and I use them in my kits as well. So that's the Olight i3e EOS with one AAA battery inside of it. Next up is more of a specialty item, which I have dummy corded to the key fob inside the huge 2.0 here. And I always keep the lanyard on light, so I decided to give him the most options. He can take this off if he doesn't like it, but this is the Ace Beam Polklet AA. I have a couple of these. I use them in my various kits. What this runs on is either a AA battery or a 14-1200 battery. It has three different modes, as we can see here. Super bright and tail clicky switch. It doesn't tail stand, unfortunately, but that's okay. The reason why we have this in here is that it can also use AA battery form factor or a lithium ion battery factor. And this lithium ion battery that comes with it has a USB-C charging port. So you can charge up the internal battery in here if you take it out of here and you can use the double a while you're charging this so this allows more flexibility when it comes to lighting elements inside the kit and we're always looking for that in our edc kits especially our survival kits or just everyday carry so this is a good option and also has a high cri 219f emitter i believe inside of it so i'm a high cri fan and this is more on the neutral white color here as you can see and it just works very well. A good thing to have also. So that's our second primary or first primary light there. Next up, we're going to go over the tool section here. This is the Victorinox Huntsman. has a variety of different tools on it. Our main blade, our secondary blade here. And it also has a small, I still have oil on this. This has a small slotted screwdriver, bottle cap lifter, wire bender. And we also have our can opener as well, smaller slotted screwdriver. We have a pair of tweezers in here and the scale. And we also have a small toothpick. Not that that's going to be too much useful, but we have a corkscrew here. We have a small mini uh, pin here in the scale. And we also have a small awl here. But the main thing about this, other than the tools on it, I'm not going to go over everything. We have a scissor and we have the saw. I wanted him to have a saw with the kit here and the Huntsman from Victorinox is a perfect platform for that use. It has a lot of other useful tools with it and it's in such a small form factor that this can do a lot of good work outdoors. It's lightweight. It's got enough tools on it for daily EDC carry, but the saw really helps this in terms of processing wood, small pieces of wood at that too, accurately on the trail. I've used this kind of saw for a number of years now, and I really appreciate it. And it goes well with the other main tool in the, in the kit here. So Victorinox is a great company, and I'm not sure if you ever had a Victorinox, but this is a good one to start with. So I got it with him. I have a small piece of paracord here, which I made for a lanyard. So if he did not want to lose it, he could put it around his gloved hand or something like that, or attach it to something so it doesn't fall out of his pocket. Basically, you can dummy cord it to a area. So that's our first multi-tool. Moving along, we do have another tool here. This is the Dozer K-Bar knife. 
And this one I kind of paracord wrapped. It's a little silly looking because I'm not the best at doing my wraps on paracord, but again, we're using similar cordage to the one on the outside where it has those seven strands plus three other strands. They're sewing thread, a fire starting thread, which you can see here a little bit on the camera. It's kind of like a, a red strand here and also has a fishing line in it. So we have a couple of different uses for this cordage if he needs to use it in an emergency. So we have that around the knife here and also gives it a little bit more of a grip when it's wet out. But this is a, a cheap K-Bar dozer knife. It's not the greatest steel ever, but it will work in a pinch and it is a full tang knife, which is more important compared to the other multi-tools in the kit is you always want some sort of full tang knife, I feel like, when you're outdoors. You can do a lot of processing with this kind of knife. It's got a little bit of a thicker spine here, even though the metal is not the greatest. You can still use it for processing wood and other slightly heavier duty tasks than you would with the multi-tool knife blades if you want to save your blades. So that is our primary knife in the kit put that up there and let's go over the other multi-tool in the kit while we're at it this is our primary one which i consider the primary because it's a plier based one this is the leatherman rev and on the outside we have a 420 hc stainless steel blade i tried cleaning this one up as much as i could as i got it off of ebay but it, it works very well it's very sharp and uh we're working pretty good here with the tool set. It complements the Huntsman inside the kit as well as the main K-Bar dozer knife. We have a pair of pliers, needle nose pliers here in the tip, regular pliers in the center, and we got wire cutters here as well. The solid ones, not the replaceable ones on most of their models. So this rev also has slotted screwdriver here, a 2D Phillips head screwdriver on the side here, their own proprietary one. And then on this side has a bunch of other items like a small, again, Another can opener, bottle cap lifter with the wire stripper here in, in the center where the V-notch is. We have a small, very, very small single file here and a depth gauge on the other side along with a smaller slotted screwdriver. And then finally, on the other end, we have a package opener if I can try to get out with the fanning part. That's the only thing about these uh, tools is fanning them out. They don't always come out. So we have a package opener, but you can use that for other things for cutting purposes and whatnot. So basically, that's the tool set of the Leatherman Rev. And the reason why we have it in the kit is that it complements our Victorinox Huntsman very well, where the Huntsman doesn't have any pliers, but it does have scissors and a saw primarily. This does not have that, so they work very well in conjunction with each other in terms of synergy and covering areas that each other don't. So basically, you have a pretty much lightweight toolkit here. It's not the best toolkit in the world, obviously, but it will work in a pinch. And if he's snowmobiling out in the cold this might come in handy for something so that's our primary plier tool kit there moving along we do have a pair of big nail clippers obviously these are nail clippers but we have a smaller file on it as well these are good for cutting cordage or zip ties which we will get to later but that's what i use them for for cutting zip ties or cordage or fishing line in that case that's why we have nail clippers in the kit here and then the last item in the center spawn here at least we have a pair of paper clips. I do plan on adding more here, smaller ones of variety of sizes, but paper clips come in handy for a variety of different things, for getting to areas that are hard to reach, like little holes and things, and also for cleaning, like getting to the nooks and crannies of our tools. You can use them for maintenance is what I use them on. My Victorinoxes, my Leathermans, things like that, they come in handy, or for ejecting SIM cards in, in smaller phones, if you will. So there's a variety of different uses for paper clips. You can even cut them, temper them with fire and use them as a makeshift fishing hook so you can do it like that if you want you can bend it with the pliers and turn it put it on a string and then you get yourself a makeshift fishing hook there's plenty of uses for paper clips but that's why we have them in the kit here let's continue on the left side here we have a usb-c charging cable which can charge that usb-c battery in the ace beam pokelet so we have one pair of cable in here for that and then we have our standard lighter it's not a big lighter but it will still get the job done i might add a secondary light lighter in here as well but this is part of our fire starting material and it's one of the easiest ways to start a fire and the fastest way so we have that in the kit and then below here we have a small hydro blue water filter so this has a filter in here that you can take out it's up to 50 gallons on the back, back part they sent an extra one in the kit so there's two of these for the bottom 
So it can do up to 100 gallons of filtering. And the way this works is you pull off the top cap and you would sip through the top section here. This is 0.1 microns. So the 0.1 microns is quite a good number because you want the lowest number to prevent any kind of bacteria and things like that. It doesn't disinfect the water, unfortunately, but this is a good backup option to the primary filtration system that it carries. The only problem with this is that it's a filter, it's a fiber based one. So what that means is in the extreme cold, if this thing is wet, it'll break the fibers in it. So probably best to keep them on the person at all times in the cold. So this might be a switchable option for him in the cold, unless it's not wet, then it probably will be okay in the cold is my guess, but I wouldn't risk it anyway. So that's our Hydro Blue water filter. And then on the bottom here, we have some small chapstick. This is SPF 15, brand new. It's always good to have chapstick on you, especially in the cold, to protect your skin from getting usually frostbite or chapping up or your skin breaking, especially around your lips. And it can be used as a sort of delay action for fire starting. If you use a little bit of chapstick and, let's say, cotton balls, you can make yourself a good makeshift fire starter. So this is our chapstick. Moving along, we have some O-rings for the ace beam here in the, in the bag. Next to it, we have a small pack of what we call mini glow sticks. So we're about six of these. These are fun to have, fun to use. Um, in case there's an issue with any of the electronics in the kit and he can't make fire and he still needs to see, you can just simply break one of these and this will be enough light for the immediate you know, area around so he can find his way around. So I thought having mini glow sticks that would fit in the kit would be a somewhat useful idea uh, for that only purpose so there's six of them here so you have enough light for whatever he's doing in that duration probably for a few hours maybe so we have that in the kit these are mini glow sticks and I, I find them pretty useful in case electronics fail next up is this small bag of more uh, smaller type of safety pins here a variety of sizes so that he can use to put things together or in case any of his clothing gets ripped you just simply keep it together temporarily with these safety pins and then finally, on the top side here, we have a variety of different sized, what I call, I'm trying to get these out here, might be able to pull them out this way, zip ties. So we have a variety of different zip ties here, and uh, this is basically, you know, self-explanatory in case he doesn't have enough cordage to tie something or he needs to tie something up real quick, we get zip ties. And we can use that nail clipper to, to clip off any of the extra ends. So that's it for the side panel on our pouch here. We'll go into the back part here. Um, the first thing we have is a handkerchief. So, or rather a bandana. This is a rather bigger one. And it's always good to have one of these in terms of multifunction use. It can be used as a filter. It can be used as a sling, as a makeshift, improvised sort of tourniquet, if you will. I'm not sure if it really works, but... There's different ideas that you could use with a bandana of a big size, a cotton one especially. Behind here we have 160 meters of dental floss. So this dental floss here is not just for using with your hygiene, obviously. Uh, I use this as cordage in, in the outdoor setting as just for hanging up things and tying small things together. Like for example, if I'm going to boil water in one of my canteens, my bottleneck canteens, I'll use this cordage to, to get a small little stick, put it in the neck of the bottle, and then drop that over a fire to hang over fire. So there's a lot of different uses you can have with this cordage. You can use part of it to tie up a small bundle of wood. And we can take our hook here with the Victorinox. And you can put that cordage around the, the string of it, much like you're carrying a parcel or, or some sort. This was designed for parcels, this hook, but you can use it to carry a bundle of wood with this cordage. So it makes transporting items much easier. So you can use this in conjunction with the tools on the table to make life a little bit easier. And it's 160 meters of cordage. So that means uh, it's quite a lot. You won't run out. So you can even use it for other various purposes that I'm sure you can imagine. But it's cheap. It's about $1.25 and you can get it at the $1.25 store. And it's a good amount of cordage to pit in a small area here. So next up we have our 
bigger safety pins, which I've attached to here. This kind of acts like a key holder if you want another key fob, but we have five bigger safety pins in case he needs to put something together for a med medical emergency, like maybe a cravat or something like that. So we have the safety pins in here, and we have another bag full of tips here for one of our other cables here, which is on the side. This is our charging cable, and it has a DC output part. This is important. This will come to play later on. But basically, you can change the tips here. You can go from micro to mini to even USB-A to charge uh, the battery bank in here. So we have that to cover the other types of charging cables he might encounter in the field. So we have that in the pocket there. Going back further down in here, make sure we got nothing else in here. We have a Myler Rescue Space Blanket. So obviously this is 52 by 84. This is one of the generic brands on Amazon. It's good to have something like this in a kit because this can provide either shelter, collect water, warmth, signal, etc., etc. It just has so many different uses for it. And we can, again, we could take the cordage here and if we want, we can tie up the ends, ball it up with a little rock or something soft that won't puncture the uh, material. And you can have yourself like a little toggle you can hang this up with and make a small type of shelter. So we have one in the kit here. And that's it for this side of the pouch. Let's move over to this side. As we mentioned before, this is our small USB cord. And this one's a small DC to USB type of cord. And the barrel connector is good because it's modular. So that comes with part of the charging system we have here. On the top here, we'll go over the fire starting material. This is our small ferro rod. I use these small ones. They work generically pretty well for gross motor skills and in the cold I don't you still have a little bit of motor skills to use this so this is another way of making fire with this striker here it has measurements and has a kind of a small little hex wrench here if you will and it's got a measurement for maps on this side and a measurement in millimeters on this side so a multifunction small little tool uh, I think this is the Foster or Fost X type of version on Amazon correct me if I'm wrong but they're decent little sticks. They work decently well. So it's another way for him to start fires in addition to the lighter if it doesn't work in a high elevation setting. Moving along, we have on the top here also a small bag of hair ties. Why hair ties? They act like rubber bands and you can use a variety of different rubber bands in a small form factor. So we have them in the kit here and they're a little bit more rugged than your standard rubber bands. And then underneath this main pouch here, we do have the third light of the, of the kit. This is a SOL IPX4 type rated headlamp that's rechargeable. has a micro rechargeable port here, which we can use with our cable and our specialized tip. And we have several different functions of lights here with three different modes. And it has a infinite dimpinal, dim, dimmable or brightening mode here, which you can hold down and you can change the brightness levels to brighter or lower. So we have a, several different levels of brightness levels here. And then we also have red LEDs at various bright levels too as well and different modes. I typically find the blinking one very useful for signaling in emergencies. And the red LED is good for maintaining night vision. I use this in my work kit, this particular headlamp, and I've used it on rescues. Lasts on the medium modes for about three and a half to four hours, which is quite a long time for a small headlamp of this size and caliber. And plus the fact that it's rechargeable and at least rainproof makes this a good addition for the kit here. And it's small form factor allows it to fit inside the bag Whereas other type of headlamps, which kind of bulge out due to their lenses and TRR optics, makes it a little bit more bulkier for the kit to accommodate. So that's why we have the SOL IPX4 headlamp in the kit here, our third and final light. Moving along, we do have a small whistle here, and it's dummy corded to the key fob so it doesn't get lost. So if there's a problem, you can whistle for rescue. Now, there are much better whistles out there, but this is the one I had on hand. I might upgrade this to a SOL branded whistle or some sort of flat whistle that's pretty good for use in almost all environments. So we have a small generic whistle. I'll put that to the side there. And then underneath this pouch, we have a pair of glue sticks. So this works in conjunction with the fire starting material and the Leatherman plier. You can hold one end 
the pliers and kind of use the lighter to use the glue to fix any sort of problems that might occur on the trail in a pinch. It's not a permanent solution fixer, but it will plug up any holes or anything like that. And so it's just a good idea to have a bunch of glue sticks here in a kit for repair issues. Moving along on the top brand band here, we have the fire starting kit, a small one. These are stormproof matches from, from a stormproof match set. I cut some of the ends off for a shorter stick length and we have the strikers in here. We also have several different types of birthday candles for maintaining a lighting. So all he has to do is start up one of these candles and that could be the constant light source for a couple hours for him. And this will allow us again, another fire starting method in the cold and wet environment. And it's sealed up in this bag and I did a little bit extra tape around it so it doesn't get punctured. So this is our stormproof matches with the strikers and candles. Moving along, we have our reflecting mirror. This is one of the metal ones, and it's got a protective sheath over the metal surface, so it prevents it from getting scratched. And I keep it in the plastic bag here as a sighting hole in the middle, so you can kind of sight where you're aiming your reflective surface and has instructions on the back on how to do that. So this is one of our smaller type of reflecting mirrors. Again, the, the better ones are the ones that are actual fra more fragile and have a higher surface of reflection uh, so that kind of means a better chance of being seen. But this will work in a pinch, and it's better than having nothing. Moving along, we have another bag here. This has some coffee filters in the top and also different various sizes of thin aluminum. Not the most useful aluminum, but it can work in a pinch for a variety of different things. And the coffee filters can work as a quasi-sediment filter for filtering water that can work in conjunction with the Hydro Blue water filtration system. So we have a physical method of actually filtering water in case this doesn't work. You can see, still use the coffee filters in this small bag. Moving along underneath the two separate pouches under the main web bands, we do have more items. First one I want to bring out is the electronical component. This is the Ultralast Green AA Solar panel recharger and I have the manual with it to protect the front of the cover here. Basically what this is is it has a USB out here and you can turn that on and it can output USB current at a very very stable voltage but also very low current voltage. I believe it should be anywhere between according to the specifications in the back here about roughly 150 to 300 milliamp hours out depending on the battery sources. So the batteries that it charges is two AA batteries here. So you can replace these. These are rechargeable AA batteries. The nice thing about this kit though, and I'll go ahead and grab the item here. We have a small DC barrel port. Now this will come into play later on with the different tips and charging our radio inside the bag. But I don't want to skip too far ahead. Basically this will work in the sunlight. It will charge up the AA batteries. It doesn't have a uh, voltage protection circuit in it, so you want to be careful when you charge it. It is a bit gimmicky, I will admit. It takes a while to charge the batteries, but it actually does charge the batteries. And you can also run the radio in here off of this on the regular solar panel and other various radios. So that's why we have it in the kit here. It does work. You just got to give it a couple days to charge, which I know is a whole lot of time in a survival situation. But it, again, I don't have anything else that's a solar charger and a USB output battery bank and that runs on rechargeable batteries at least so this kind of fills the niche and the size requirements for the bag kit obviously this can be replaced with something more efficient in strictly a battery bank sense but it's the best option i had at the time and it's why i use it in the kit and we'll go over it later in a moment underneath here we do have a small bag that houses my one liter bag here this is a whirl pack you can get a, get these in a set of like five or seven i think on amazon basically it's a big bag like this that fills up a liter of water again it's made to be used in conjunction with the hydro blue filter so we have that working for us here and i usually keep it in the secondary bag here in case something tries to puncture it and it can puncture in the, in the main bag here and then we have that extra water filter which i talked about earlier with the hydro blue this is the other filter that enables this to go to about 50 gallon, uh, another 50 gallons on top of it, making it roughly a 100 gallon filter. Underneath, we have some water purification tablets, portable aqua is what it, with the code, or potable aqua, excuse me. It's basically chlorine dioxide tablets, 
and uh, there's a pack of there's four of them in here so he has enough to purify his water sources if he wants to and then finally underneath in this pouch we have a small fresnel lens and its own protective case so we have that for as another way of inspecting wounds and things like that or identifying uh things that he can't see and also potentially for starting fires so that's it for that side pouch and it's going to fit that back in there on this pouch here we have the specialty item of the kit and this is a kenwood th22 at monoband radio so basically what this is is a small radio it has a variety of different frequencies that i've programmed into it and this allows him to either transmit or receive on various frequencies and we have let's see if i can pick up the weather frequency here okay so basically it's coming in a little bit weak but basically you get the idea this can receive weather frequencies on the vhf spectrum 162.475 is our local weather frequency it's not doing very well here inside the house because we're under all this rf noise and whatnot but we have our basic two meter kenwood antenna this is a late 90s model so it uses a little bit older technology but however it's still rugged it has non-volatile memory and you can run this light or rather this unit off the battery here because it has a dc in and once again, this runs off of USB power. So anything basically will, should run it. We should turn this on here. Hold on a minute. Do an output here. And there we go. So again, we're running the radio off the battery bank here, which is super important. And you can also transmit out with this radio. It won't be the best kind of transmission. I'm not going to do it here on the camera because it'll probably blow out my... Uh, my mixers my sound devices mixers but you can transmit and call out for help while using this if you're at a high elevation it will work so this allow this combination of items allows you to either listen and monitor for changing weather conditions in case your phone doesn't work or if you can't use your phone you have some way of, of probably increasing your chances of communication signaling if you will so this is an important signaling device an information gathering device that's not attached to the internet as a ham radio operator, I always try to propagate or promote the idea of using radios as a form of communication, whether it's an emergency or EDC use. So we have our basic battery pack here. You can't charge this battery pack, unfortunately, with the USB power bank here, but you can run the radio, and that's what's important. So that is our specialty item of the kit. Here in the back, we have the zip pouch, and inside here, we have a two pack of hand warmers and we also have a pack of toe warmers two toe warmers so for each boot so when he's out there in a the cold he has a way to kind of keep his hands and feet warm which is absolute paramount in cold conditions so decided to throw this in the kit in the rear pouch here for him and hopefully that'll work very well so that is our entire kit here and i want to say thank you guys for watching and going through all that with me and it was a pleasure to put this together again for my friend and i am looking to do maybe do these kits as a sort of service maybe in the future different customizable kits at least and see where that goes but for now thank you for watching and enjoy your day